Hey everyone, this is the first video about the design pattern in microservices architecture. So, first design pattern that we are going to talk about is about decomposition pattern. Under decomposition pattern, we have decomposition by business domain and subdomain. So, we are going to analyze both of these one by one, right? So, let's move ahead and talk about the business domain. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, before moving to the decomposition pattern let's see the kind of projects that are coming under microservices first kind of is the monolithic to microservices right and the second is microservices in nature from scratch so first kind of project that you have monolithic application then you have to convert it into microservices architecture those kind of projects are known as they are named as brownfield projects Second is, you are starting to create a software application and from scratch you are thinking in microservices. Those projects are known as green projects, green field projects. So these are the just terminologies and keep in mind. Coming to the next one, microservice. This word is made of two words, micro plus service. So this micro, we are going to see. Micro means small. How micro? How small? Because this is a very general term, right? And it changes there is no uh, measurement right to decide how small how micro so let's consider it with that diagram this is one animal goat is there right and lion comes there and then lion sees the goat and see uh, he consider that lion, this goat is small right but lion itself is large like it's a big animal right now consider elephant right so for elephant, even lion is a small creature, right? Small in size. Now coming to giraffe. So in terms of height, height of giraffe is larger than uh, elephant, right? So just wanted to make point that this uh, micro is very general term and it, the definition changes person to person, project to project. So how to decide the boundary about this micro and small? We are going to talk about decomposition by domain and subdomain they are going to address this concern so first talk about the business domain that is there so how to decide the size of the microservice so first business functionality right so i was talking about the online service portal so when we have online service portal there are different categories like product categories there uh, order management is there login management is there so these are the business functionalities right and we we have to we should take out each microservice with each business functionality right so for example this is the sample uh, microservice right so we have taken product management which is a separate function we have order management we have account management we have payment management and login management these each of these microservices are showing a different business functionality right so that is why we have segregated it and they are autonomous in development and all those qualities that you can think of of microservices are coming under business functionality now coming to the second one how to decide the size of the microservices second we are going to talk about the subdomain right so when we are uh, separating uh, when we are uh, breaking the mic monolithic application into microservices architecture there are god classes god classes means there are certain classes which are shared among modules some utility classes are there some common classes are there so those are god classes so when you are breaking your monolithic application to microservices dividing those god classes those shared classes is very difficult right at this point of time uh, bounded contacts bounded context term or I say domain driven design so which comes under sub domain design principle they come into picture to rescue so domain driven design in itself is a software design architecture so uh, here the main point is that uh, when you are designing for the microservices you use the word which is which uh, the business person can also relate Sh should not be very technical so and should not be very general right so everyone should be able to understand that right so that we can we will be able to draw the line between the functionalities right so this is the bounded context term. and for each bounded context there is a one service uh, like taken out one service in this way we can separate the we can segregate get segregate the god classes properly let's see this with an example so we have order management service right so 
under order management service we can have different functionalities under order management like one part is going to take care of the placing order and one is that invoice generator number invoice generation about the order and <clears throat> once order is placed users are going to track those orders orders right so these are the different functionalities and subdomains i can say and i can separate them uh, in different services because these are all together different they are related to order but they are different like when you are requesting for the order there is nothing to or do with the placing order and invoice generation when you are requesting for the invoice generation there is nothing to do with placing order right so we can separate these out and we can have different database for each service so this is how sub domain and bounded context going to come into picture so we have seen how we can make use of the uh, business functionality and sub domain to decompose the monolithic application into microservices architecture right so let's see what is next so next decomposition pattern we are going to see strangler pattern right so this is very much important when you are converting monolithic application to microservices architecture this is going to play very much important i'll see you in the next video with this decomposition pattern right so till then take care bye bye